This is Victoria Kirsanova, and you are watching Muscle Sport TV. Here with Brian Cage at the Redcon One Booth 2020 Olympia Fan Pavilion. Brian, what's going on, bro? Uh, pretty good, pretty good. You know, it was a decent introduction. You could have called, you know, the machine, the Wolverine, Mr. GMSI, the Motorola with Paragon, the owner of the Spotlight, AEW Superstar, <laughs> Team Taz member, FTW Champion. You know, but it's cool. You just went the easy route saying Brian Cage. I'll let it slide this time. But uh, things are going good. Things are going good. The, um, I mean, let's be honest, though. Let's call a spade a spade. You said last time you uh, met me at the LA Fit Expo, which is one of the better expos without a competition, but, you know, I'm... I'm Olympia, this is a little, it's a little disappointing compared to the normal expo. That, it, that well, you've been to the regular Olympia expo. Yeah, I've, I've been to it 2013, 14, 15, and last year. So it's, uh, I, I came in here too, you know. I'm like, okay, cool. It's the only people I know. I'm talking, I'm, I'm, I'm talking shop, moving around. And then I, I go to the bathroom. I'm like, oh, cool, I'll go to the bathroom. Go, you know, do a lap around the whole building thinking this whole place was full. And then to realize it's just one, one lane, that was it. I was like, oh, no wonder it didn't cost the entry fee. I'm like, okay, I get it. Well, you know what it is, the, uh, I think they're worried with the COVID shit and the uh, capacity and everything. Well, well, I mean, you have the COVID stuff, the last minute change and the cancellation. And then obviously there wasn't that many vendors because of it all. So then, too, you couldn't really charge without that many vendors. But, I mean, still, it's better than nothing. Absolutely. I definitely agree. And what's going on with Redcon? How long have you been working with Aaron? Uh, so, you know what? I, I, I lucked out and uh, I tore my bicep at the beginning of the year. I was out rehab made my surprise debut uh, for all elite wrestling on double or nothing and uh a lot of the guys happened to be there because they're big wrestling fans and they saw me and they had no idea who the guest entrant was which was me and uh, they popped huge and they came up to me like dude hey do you want anything blah blah we'll send you some subs come down to our gym yada 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 that took place and then we started talking shop and they're big fans of mine and i kind of fit the the pro wrestler slash bodybuilder mold so uh got offered up a deal and I signed with them back in August and it's, it's been great, man. It's been great. You have a code or anything you want to give out that's yours through Redcon? Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, B Cage. That's just it. No number needed. Just B Cage. Saves you 20% on all your orders. But, I mean, too, these guys have insane deals like every, on the daily. It always changes. Like, I was like, man, what's the point of my code? You guys, like, give them away shit all the time for free. So, I it's Redcon1 with the number one dot com. Brian Cage, thank you so much. No problem, man. Thank you very much. This is West Coast Johnny, and you're watching Muscle Sport TV. Recently passed, uh, unfortunately, another year has passed since uh, I wear the shirt in memorial of my former co-worker and friend, Louis Lopez, who was shot and killed during a uh, narcotics operation in Manhattan when I worked there, March 10th, 1993 at 15.58 hours. Um, so anytime I see these things with cops involved, um, you know, I always think, hey, listen, you know, never wore those shoes my friend so the chicago cop 13 year old kid i don't give a fuck how old the kid is 13 years old he can fucking shoot just as good as a 23 year old or a fucking 33 year old and obviously he was able to shoot because he had a very big nine millimeter on him the type of gun like the cop has as his service weapon and i had as my service weapon and i 
have uh, at home also. Um, he had his hands up. All right, I'm going to demonstrate to you using my everyday carry gun. This is my pocket rocket, my Taurus 380, okay? I have a license to carry this in all 50 states. I have an HR 218. Full concealed carry permit uh, for three firearms that I own. This is uh, less than a pound. This gun weighs 15 ounces, so... His was a lot bigger, and I'll show you the pictures as we're doing this thing. So, let me take these off. I'm going to move this out of the way a little bit. Now, in that first freeze frame, you see the, uh, the suspect who had just let eight rounds go, right? They had the, uh, the, 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 that system that I know the NYPD wants to put in place, and they still haven't yet, where uh, there is things that read gunshots so eight gunshots now i don't know if it was this suspect shooting that they didn't say but there was confirmed gunshots the cops get there this kid takes off down a very dark alley at 2 a.m and i don't know if the cops saw the gun in his hand when they were running but when he was stopped by that opening in the fence it was he had his gun in his right hand like I am right now and he was facing here. Okay. Hold this. Because you want the cop feet. Okay? Now the cop says, turn around. The kid could have dropped the gun and turned this way. Right? But no, the kid what he does is he turns to his right. Now, you can't see my right hand and gun. You see my left hand is empty. As police officers were trained to watch the suspect's hands. Gun out of view. Now he dropped the gun behind the fence. But as he's turning, he gets shot. Because in the cop's mind, here he sees the gun. Any loss of life is tragic. But that cop is thinking he's going to get fucking shot. This is justified. And the reason why is what I just showed you. The U.S. Supreme Court has decided that a long time ago, because this was when I was studying for the sergeant's test, and I passed and I retired as a sergeant, thankfully. Um, the U.S. Supreme Court stated that the officer does not have to wait for the glint of steel, was the language used in this court decision. Meaning, if I can articulate that I believe you have a weapon and are going to use deadly physical force against me, I don't have to wait till you take it out and point it at me, because by then, you might have won the draw. Like, you know, uh, uh, gun smoke on Front Street, right? In front of the Bull's Head Saloon. Um, so, he didn't have to wait for the glint to steal. I'll tell you something else. While that kid was standing there, sideways with the gun in view, the cop could have legally shot him right then and there and would have been totally justified probably more justified than they're going to make him out to be now because the gun was still in his hand at the time so just give it a thought gun out confirmed we see it you see it with your own eyes and then you can't see his right hand you cannot see it it's out of out of view it's being blocked by his body now, we know why the kid did that, because he tried to throw the gun and go, I don't got no gun. I didn't mind. Yeah. And you could see the cop was trying to rend the first aid on this kid. Like I said, it doesn't matter how old somebody is. I've had situations where fucking little kids, younger than 10, had guns and shot their friend in the face by mistake because they were playing with it after they found it in the bushes and the projects in Brooklyn because when the cops were rolling in some fucking drug dealers threw it in the bushes and left and some fucking like seven or eight year old kid found it and shot his friend in the fucking face with it this is fucking the way it is out there you fucking people that don't you never walk the mile in those shoes. You never walk the solo foot post, especially at 20 years old in fucking bed I have. I've seen a lot of disgusting, ugly, 
fucked up shit going on. And in this case, this Chicago cop ascertained, for without a doubt, before he even opened his mouth, because the videotape said it for him, he was in fear for his life via a threat of deadly physical force against him. Shooting is justified. You love squatting. You've been squatting since you're a teenager. You you have a a, a a good amount of weight on that bar, and you're feeling good doing it. Um, sometimes you get a little back pain afterwards, knee pain and stuff. That was in your twenties or late teens. Old guys like me, fifty three, squatting not a good idea. Well. Personally, I haven't done squats in years because, A, my lower back was fucking killing me and I thought maybe if I stopped squatting it would help. But by that time, the damage was already done and I needed a uh, spinal fusion. So basically, squats. If I did do them now, I would be taking a chance on fucking up, um, you know, the, the repair that was done two years ago. So I choose not to do that. I'm not that interested in fucking squatting and I'm not going on stage and I don't need big quads and all of that but you can get by without squatting you just got to be a little smart about it leg press you know leg extension leg curl if you want to hack squat you're still going to put pressure on your back but it's a little different because you're leaning your upper back is leaning on the thing regular squats when you have lower back pain I'm telling you it's just it's it's a recipe for disaster so old guy training tip as far as leg day goes if you're gonna do legs do them smartly like Greg says he can put quarters on the leg press and do a hundred reps and trust me you'll grow you'll feel it um, I'm not that into leg day so I don't do that my legs uh, I, I joke around I say wheelchair bodybuilding competitors have a fucking harder leg day than I do Listen, I'm a guinea, chest and arms. I'm <laughs> just kidding about that. I always fucking hated leg day. But when I did do it, I got up to some pretty decent squats. I was doing over 400 pounds from my, you know, one rep max, you know. Um, basically, 275 was my last real set. I wouldn't even fucking do 27.5 right now because it would just, it would be too much pain involved. Put your body through all of that for what? It's not worth it because then you might have to skip the next day in the gym. Just work out smart. And the main thing is squats are not a must. Yeah, I know. The king of exercises. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Whatever. Call me a pussy if you want. My thing is I'd rather feel better the next day than feel like shit and have to skip because I did squats. Then I did my regular leg workout. And the next day I'm fine, ready to go again. This old guy training tip, free added value right here. Brought to you by LegalSteroids.com. 30% off Muscle Video 30 at their website. They are the title sponsor of Mikey Crazy Hawk's favorite Instagram live show of the week on Wednesdays, 3 p.m. in the East. Gearing up, you go to, to MuscleSportMag.com slash store. Subscriptions, single issues, back issues. And apparel like this new teal colored MSM classic t-shirt. MuscleSportMag.com slash store.
Hey, hey, good morning, good morning, good morning. All right, everybody, this is Tiny with another Tiny's Morning Minute. You know, things are getting a little wacky right now, and uh, every time I turn on the TV or look at my phone, all I see is people wondering, where do we go from here? What do we do now? I'll tell you what we do now. We go to the gym, damn it. Uh, where do we go from here? Everyone crying and whining. Things are crazy. What do we do now? You go to the gym, damn it. You pour yourself a protein shake. You drink the protein shake. And then you go and you start pumping the iron. Get your pecs pumped up. Get your arms all pumped. That's what we're going to do. Where are we going to go? To the damn gym. What are we going to do? We're going to...